Hey, a little rain never hurt nobody. Not even a bit of a wetness can dampen the spirits here at Ludwig Field. The Terps are hot atop the Big Ten after three games and continue to ride this wave of momentum as they take on the Old Dominion Monarchs. The Old Dominion Monarchs. Aside me, Josh Kaplan, my name is Michael Kirsting. We thank you very much for joining us from a damp Ludwig Field. And Josh, both teams ride in an unbeaten streak of five games. Building up to be a pretty interesting one here. Yeah, looking for some quality football tonight from both teams. Both teams are going to look to make that six games and look to do it on a pretty slick pitch here at Ludwig Field. And one of the players who is helping us, helping the, helping the Terps, excuse me, the most to do it, is Nick Richardson. You see his stats on the season. One of the most instrumental pieces in this Terps lineup. Yeah, the reigning Big Ten defender of the week. It's usually a good thing when you don't hear much from your fullbacks, but Richardson, you hear a lot of positives coming from him, which is exactly what you want to hear. He's going to look to make even more of an impact tonight. And what Nick Richardson is going to have to face off against is that man, Tristan Jenkins. You see the five goals and ten points. He's been leading Lethal up top for the Monarchs. Yeah, just a dynamic forward in all aspects of his game. Richardson, Rindove, and the entire Terps back line are going to have their hands full with Jenkins tonight. And he leads a two-man front line for the Old Dominion Monarchs alongside Michael Eberle. Yeah, and Mark Christensen, the big six-foot-three center back back there commanding the Monarchs defense. And on the flip side, for those Maryland Terrapins in yellow, it's Max Riley getting his first start tonight after a winner against Ohio State. Yeah, the freshman from Macclesfield, and everything else pretty much stays consistent. Malcolm Johnson going to play a little bit more of that advanced role as a 10. And now, quick stat for you. This has been every week except September 6th. The Terps have had a different player as one of their players of the week. All It's been Nicholas Neumann. It's been Will Kulnick. It's been Chris Rindo. But now, it's been Nick Richardson, too. Yeah, it's something that connects all those lines. It's the back line. That's the one thing that stayed consistent this year. Maybe not finding your number nine as we're going to see the third different starter in that striker position for the Terps. But that back line so experienced, so well grouped together. And Lowell, not Neumann tonight. Net Neumann's still out with injury. But Lowell being able to command them, going to be a solid back line all year for the Terps. And we bring up those three forwards. Max Riley is up there. It was his first goal in professional collegiate competition against Ohio State. They've tried to work with Herman Giamatte and Colin Griffith off the bench. Hasn't quite been firing as of yet, though. Yeah, and Riley a bit more of a physical presence as a number nine. Griffith and Giamatte a little bit more dynamic, maybe can beat you off the dribble, but Riley's back to goal, going to get his body into you, be a physical presence all night long. He was right in the middle of the six to feed off of Josh Bulma's scraps. It was a wonderful ball that found him on the right side of the pitch. That was from Alex Nitzel. And as we look at the other side, we were talking off air that we think Yo that Jonas Schmalbach, the grad forward from Venice, yes, Venice, Italy, that is, is going to play a, de a decent part today as well, sitting in just sitting just behind those two strikers. Yeah, two goals, three assists on the season for Schmalbach. Just kind of a dynamic player in that 10 role. He can play as an advanced number nine. He can play as that withdrawn number nine, maybe in a little bit of a 10 position. Just kind of one of those players you want to free roam and get on the ball as much as he can. And now taking a little bit of a look at the managerial matchup, both Sasha Sarovsky and Alan Dawson have been at the helm for quite some time, and they've also, they're also both in the top 15 in winning percentage over their careers. Yeah, we talk about two teams riding hot streaks coming into this, but this is one of the most experienced coaching matchups you will ever see in all of college soccer. And whenever these two coaches of this caliber come against each other, you're always going to have quality football. 4-2-2 two, and two are the Monarchs. And again, Maryland, just the tie to Penn State. They've won their other two matchups here in the Big Ten. This is their final non-con for quite a bit. They have High Point and then Delaware in the future, but a few more conference games before that. Yeah, and Sasha Swarovski just putting this game in here. No Big Ten game this weekend. Kind of just wants to keep his players in that rhythm of playing, you know, a Wednesday or Thursday and then a Saturday or a Sunday. Just keep the rhythm going. Keep your players sharp. And it's a quality non-conference game with the Monarchs coming in here to Ludwig Field. And we were speaking about it before the game, Josh, that maybe we think that's why Riley is up top. Maybe just to get to see just a, a run out in the team, give Giamatte and Griffith a little bit of a rest. I think if you're going to do it in any game, it would be this one. You give him this game in between the Big Ten conference games to see, you know, can he be your number nine? Giamatte and Colin Griffith have not been that convincing. Griffith was very good in the first two to three games of the season. Then Giamatte found his bite a little bit with the Virginia game at Audi Field, getting on the score sheet there. And now it's Riley coming up with a clutch win against Ohio State. It's, it's kind of just this ever-moving position for the Terps and they're just looking to find the one who fills it. You saw those fans, they look a little miserable, but they'll come out to support their Maryland Terrapins. We're just beneath 60 degrees and Josh said it, 
Is Max Riley, the England man, going to be able to do it on a cold, rainy night in College Park? Well, we're about to tell you, and you're about to find out. It's Michael Statham in goal on the left for the Monarchs. He is ready. Jamie Lowell on the right for the Terps. He is ready. It's the Monarchs. It's the Terps. It's live from College Park. And once again, we thank you for joining us on Big Ten Plus. First, kickoff time, 7.04 p.m. Terps have possession attacking from left to right, and the Monarchs will defend the opposite side. The crew once again, rain, shine, sleet, hail, always out in force. And they have definitely let Michael Statham know the day will be all over him for the next 90 minutes. The Terps looks to get a quick attack going through Griffin Dillon down the left-hand side. Easily usher out, out of play by Aaron Deans. Was actually off sides, didn't go fully out. And Old Dominion gets some quick play going. This is a Old Dominion school, about 25,000 students, just outside, about 10 minutes outside Norfolk, Virginia. 2016, they played a certain football game, not this football, but college football game. They beat, the, they beat Virginia Tech. That was a huge game for them, and oh, they just did it again about a month ago. So you could say a bit of a, a state supremacy battle that, that these Monarchs are currently holding over Virginia Tech in football. On the far side is Richardson. It's a bit of a weak pass seized upon by Michael Eberle. He's got Jonas Schmalbach to his right. He's going to find Schmalbach. Jonas Schmalbach straight at Lowell. Nice work. And a shot again. Follow-up saved again by Lowell. And we're only about a minute and a half in. We saw strong defense against Ohio State, but worrisome moments early on. And this all comes from a misplaced pass from Hunter George, playing a square pass straight across the middle of the field, and a good early save from Lowell. It's kind of right at him, but makes himself big and makes a good save as the Terps are attacking down this left side now with Joshua Boma. It was Luca Costabile's ball as Boma goes down. He won a foul on this far side. Boma grabbing at that left, at that left ankle. It was a really nice ball out of the back from Costa Bile to find Bulma streaking down the left. And he seems to have stayed down for a bit of an extended time. It might be all right. He's going to try and rise to his feet. He's usually the wizard around the ball when they take free kicks. They say that he's gotten off to a slow start, Josh, but he's already kind of equaled his assist total in all of last year. Yeah, it's just the goals you're looking for from him now. He's got those assists, and, you know, he wants to add more goals to his game. That's always something he's talking about is adding co goal contributions to his game. He has equaled assists, as you said, last year, and now he's going to look to perform and score more goals for this Terps team, and this Terps team needs it. Well, he's going to look to put in an assist this time. It's going to be his right foot into the mixer near post. Riley was the target. It's hit the ref. And they're going to allow play to go on, or will they? No, they won't, as it was Owen Ruddy who was taking it up the far side. Looks like they're just going to call it back because it had taken a nice little fortunate touch off of the referee in favor of the Monarchs. Will be Monarchs ball, but I don't think the Terps were ready for the deflection. Main man in the middle today in the green is Cesar Ibarra who will do our officiating today as we take another look at the Bulma free kick. They've been playing him pretty flat lately, and there's the touch. Pretty obvious touch as Bulma looks to attack Michael Statham. Out in goal. Seized upon by Alex Nitzel. He's gone, he's gone quietly under the radar this season. He hasn't, he's uh, had a goal, no, had an assist, beg your pardon, but his defensive work has really not been talked about enough. He's a cog in that Maryland defensive midfield. Yeah, and he can play really anywhere. Sasha Ostrovsky almost never takes him off. You'll see Costa Bile maybe come off in the middle of each half, and Nitzel slide out to this left-back position, but just a quality player who can really play anywhere in that midfield or along the back line for this Terps team. And this Terps team needs it. A bit of a Swiss Army knife and a guy you can depend on, not at just one position, but two. As Nitzel finds Chris Rindov, I mean, if you want to talk about Mr. Dependable, that's Chris Rindov. He started every minute. He's played every minute of the last two seasons. And boy, what, what, a, what a transformation it's been for Chris Rindov at the back. Yeah, former walk-on, everything you think about when you think about the good college walk-on stories. Came here and was thinking about playing club soccer. You'll hear a little bit more about that when we get to halftime. We have an all-access package for you guys at home. But just a wonderful story, and Sasha Swarovski doesn't speak highly of him. Can't speak highly enough of him, excuse me. <laughs> yeah, we gotcha, we gotcha. Now the Monarchs back in possession. All the way back to Michael Statham. And he'll play it long. 
Goes to Bile, battling, and he's conceded a foul. Go back to Michael Statham. I mean, we've talked about him off air. Only one of three penalties converted on him this year, and a save percentage of 87.5%. I mean, what more can you ask for out of a freshman at that? Yeah, and the back line helping him out too. Only conceded five goals as a team this year. The Terps going to have to do a lot of work to try and force their chances on net. And on a slick pitch like this, it can be difficult to get your footing. You're not used to playing on a super soaked pitch like this where the ball's going to skip. The ball might get away from you a little bit. You have to be nice and crisp today. I mean, and how, how might, as the, the header was steered on, was about to go on another path, but Lowell, Lowell gathers the header. It was the header coming from Bing Sam Mar Christensen in the middle of the back line. He goes back to his position now. Well, what I was about to say was that, I mean, Alan Dawson couldn't, oh, it's seized upon immediately by Schmiel, by Schmalbach. It's lifted to the, to the edge of the 18, swing and a miss, and all the way out to the 18. Has that across the line? No, it has not. The shot came from the top of the box from Lewis Beckett. And the Terps under much pressure again. Great save from Lowell here. You're going to see the ball is set back to Beckett. He catches this so clean. Exactly what you want to do on a wet kit pitch. You want to keep it low. Keep it skipping off that grass. And Lowell does well to get down to his right side and make a great save. As we're going to have a corner kick here for the Monarchs. And it's Beckett to take it once more on the far side. He was the one who just put the shot in. And the ensuing corner, away by Rindov, and swinging a slice away, and Old Dominion have a chance, go waste it. Old Dominion looking the better of the two sides so far in this opening eight minutes or so at this game at Ludwig Field. Lots of chances, forcing Jamie Lowell into two excellent saves already. Terps not really getting going other than Joshua Bulma getting fouled on the left side here. And that's what you're looking for, was going to say that Alan Dawson, he's going to be feeding on this inconsistency from the Terps attack. This, again, third choice striker in, and against a defense that has only let up as few as they have, the defensive versus the attack, it really favors the Monarchs. This is Bulma down the left. Overlap came from Costa Bile. Pass wasn't really aimed towards anybody in particular. Josh mentioned... Riley going into the back, he has, but now here's Costa Bile. Nice cutback from the freshman. Still Luca Costa Bile. Squared back, it's Griffin Dillon, loose in front. And no shot came from Max Riley. Richardson, I mean, almost a rugby tackle on the Maryland fullback. That one coming, the challenge coming from Owen Ruddy. And the Terps have now found themselves alive and kicking. It's like they can hear us, Michael. As yeah. soon as we talk about the inconsistencies in their attack, the Terps get all over it. Great work here from Riley. This is just work. That's what you want to see from your 909. You want to see him get down and gritty and win these balls. Brilliant footwork from Costa Bile. Almost gets through, lays it back off to Griffin Dillon, who gets his shot away, and it's a good save in the end. And then here's the chance from Richardson. Just gets there first, and Ruddy just cleans him out completely. And the Terps have a dangerous set piece here. You can go with the in-swinger of Hunter George, the out-swinger of Joshua Boma. Look to skip this one. And George, once again, I was about to bring up, that's what a lot of Maryland Terrapin set pieces have looked like this year. Yeah, unfortunately for George, just must have lost his footing there or something, because yeah. that one, as we say, was high, wide, and not very handsome. Yeah. You could say it a few yards over on the football field, it is good. There's Michael Statham again. That's, this is a freshman keeper out of Stockport, England. He's coming across the pond. And this is, these are the types of performances you're putting in. Saves like that on the regular. Yeah, it comes from a Premier League Academy background, multiple Premier League Academies. I believe the last Academy was Nottingham Forest. Just a quality young keeper that the Monarchs will look to keep in, in their program and grow. And the crew letting Michael Statham know exactly how they feel about him. Riley on the chase. His work rate, as you said, Josh, it's, it's, looked, so, it's looked good so far. But Sasha Sarovsky described him as the inspiration in the win against Ohio State. I'll get to more of that in a bit. Here is Bulma up the right. Lays off, finds now Alex Nitzel. Nitzel struggling in possession, with a, perhaps with a slippery pitch. Costa Bile does well to keep this in. Now Dylan attacking at Bulma in case it went a little far. Fell short and headed away by Fabian Reiser at the expense of a corner for the Terps. On this near side, it will be Josh Bulma. He's been more generous in his game this year. He said that he's wanted to add that, and he has. And as Josh said before, now it's just about adding the goals and putting the ball in the back of the net. Because it'll be Bulma with the right on this near side. The in-swinger short as far as Nitzel chasing him down 
is Tristan Jenkins, as we highlighted in the pregame. He started every game, and he's and before the nil-nil draw in their last timeout, he put in two goals in each of those last two games. Yeah, man coming in here with a great run of form, and you just wonder, can he keep that up against this quality Maryland defense like we talked about in our introduction to this game? This Maryland defense has been so solid. Looked a little shaky at times, but overall a very solid back line who've, who really have played together quite a bit except outside of Costa Bile. You don't really seem to describe a one goal per game defense as solid, but they they are. They really are solid. And the, the big word that Sasha Sarovsky uses, Johnston does well to muscle off. This is Richardson. We'll come back to the point. And the pass intercepted. It was intended for George. Nitzel has to come down on the cover. Hunter George knew that ball had gone out of play. Well, the word that Sasha Sarovsky has been using this year is careless. There was all the care in the world against Ohio State because that was also a battle of two very good defenses. So I was saying to my co-commentator Brian Melanson in that game, it seemed like all of the performances before that had been billing up to this Ohio State game. They passed that test and they're right on to another one. It's good possession in between for the Monarchs. Ball is really skipping and sliding. Even there, I mean, usually it catches just a little bit, but even off the bounce, pops straight up. So Lowell has to be extra careful, makes no mistake. It's really hanging up in the wind as well. Here is George, far side to Richardson. Nice ball, just maybe a bit too short and is for Bulma. Terps have a throw. Back into Hunter George. And Bulma once again. Nice little bit of interplay. Now George onto the left foot, bit of space. Nitzel. Costa Bile had a run into the feet of Dillon. Now Riley out muscles. Only as far as Nitzel. Riley with a bit of space. Right foot won't worry Statham. Good play there from the Terps. And they're creating these chances off of just hard work. Picking up these scrappy second balls on this, on this wet pitch. And as the ball came to Riley, you kind of see Statham just read the body language of Riley as it comes back to him. He opens up his body and kind of just looks for that bottom right corner, but Statham perfectly positioned. Now, it might not be the best shot, but again, you said it. This is what Sasha wants to see. Just a little bit more like, do I want it more? And the Terps do want it. And especially a shot like that on this wet pitch, like we saw on the earlier shot from Beckett, just keeping it on the ground. It's going to skip off this wet pitch, and that's going to make it 10 times more difficult for the goalkeepers tonight. Into the back of Jenkins. They have to be careful in the penalty area. Nice work to start. And Schmalbach, that might have gone off of Nitzel's face. The shot hits an, a player in an offside position. Flag doesn't go up as Riley won the initial touch and settled down at the back for Samuel Mark Christensen. Looking long and, and looking for Owen Ruddy unsuccessfully. This is the first season for the Monarchs in the Sun Belt Conference. They've actually been there before, first time since 1982, but they've bounced around a little bit. They were in the Conference USA. They were also in the Colonial Athletic Conference for 20 years, and they are one of five teams along with James Madison, Southern Mississippi, and Marshall, one of four teams now in the Sun Belt. 14 teams out there. Header down from Schmalbach. Now Eberle looks to send Jenkins. Ushering him to the side is Rindov. Jenkins looked to make a move. The Welshman lays it off and finds Aaron Deans. Looking to find all these cutbacks, and they're finding them pretty nicely. This is Eberle on the near side. Costa Bile looked to have had it won, and now we can see it's a throw. Good work from the, from the, Dan from the Danish international. To think that this guy, Costa Bile, was the latest addition to the freshman class. I mean, what an addition he's been so far. Yeah, came over from Serie D in Italy. It's the fourth division of Italian soccer. But just a quality player that Sasha Sarovsky has been able to slot into that left back position right away, which has allowed Alex Nitzel to move into that sixth position that we speak so highly of him in. Sasha was really looking for a left-footed left back, and that's exactly one and a very high quality that he's gotten for at least one or two more years, if not all three, in Luca Costa Bile. He's won the initial header out. And a stray touch came in from Lewis Beckett again. And the Terps have a throw deep in their own half. It will be interesting to see 
what Sasha Sarovsky thinks of his players on the field. Stefan Capetti was brought on at the half hour mark of the Ohio State game and scored and nearly scored within 45 seconds of being on. It was really the tactical switches that won that Ohio State game, along with the mental fortitude as well. Don't take no, nothing away from the players. An, an outstanding effort from them. But he, but Sasha moved Josh Bolma off the wing and into the center, and that's where he was really able to express his creativity. Yeah, that's one of those moments where it's just Sasha Ostrovsky saying, I want to get my best player in the best position to get him on the ball as much as I can, as he's trying to do so here. That's exactly right. Bolma was in the right position. Now Richardson. Nice little run down the side from Johnston, but ushered out very nicely in defense by Owen Ruddy. And Statham once more to clear. He's seen a little bit of the Maryland attack, but he hasn't, he's only seen even, not even half a chance. No, you had the chance from Riley and some free kicks for the Terps, but Statham really hasn't been bothered yet. And all the way out and clear on the opposite touchline to the delight of the crew behind Michael Statham. And quickly back into touch to Chris Rindove. And after those two worrisome chances in the beginning, it's been fairly promising, especially on the defensive side for the Terps through the first 20 minutes or so. Yeah, getting a little bit more comfortable on this wet pitch, kind of coming into their own, playing some, some Maryland football, as Sasha Ostrowski likes to call it. Costa Bile, its shot took a deflection with the right, had it laid back to him from Riley. Riley has been at the nucleus of quite a few of these half chances, so now it's just about getting that final, that final bit of touch and class to get that goal. Yeah, and it's something that you really don't see the other Maryland Nines, Colin Griffith and Herman G. Mate, offering. It's that, that big physical presence of being able to back into a six foot two, six foot three center back and winning the ball and laying it off to his teammates for them to get chances, which will also start opening space up for himself as well. Long and away by Statham. And picked up by Eberle. Jenkins the target. Would have been a nice bit of skill for Max Riley had it gone through. Nice long ball looking for Ruddy. He's taking a nice chest down. Gets to the byline and he crashes into the far side advertising boards, but gets, pops right back up. Yeah, good to see him pop back up. And if that wasn't a slick pitch, that would have been a beautiful touch from Ruddy. But with this wet pitch, the ball just skips away from him a little bit and he goes crashing into the advertising boards. Jamie Lowell has held down the fort very well as Nikola, in Niklas Neumann's absence. Sasho has said that he has starters in both of them. That both of them are roommates as well. Little bit of a friendly rivalry, but they say that it often fuels each other to be better and that they've become best friends since being here at the, at the school. Yeah, friendly competition. When you have two number ones like Sasha Strosky says he has, it's, it's good for the program and it's good for both keepers because it keeps them both on their feet. It keeps them both training as hard as they can, trying to stay sharp. And, you know, fortunately for Sasha Strosky, when per one person gets hurt, in this case is Neumann, that Lowell's right there to step in. Lowell came out of the Seattle Sounders Academy all the way from New Hampshire. Had to make quite the trip across the country. to go wherever he wants. Sasha Strowski kind of putting him in that free roaming 8-10 role. Kind of just wants him to get on the ball a little bit more, create a little bit more, because he always talks about when Malcolm gets the ball, the team just seems to tick a little bit better. It doesn't seem like they've gotten him as involved as they'd like him to, because you see it. There's a bit of indecision in some of these games, a little bit of just a, of stalling. But Johnston is really confident on the ball, and if, if you want to get them the ball to anybody, not necessarily finish it, but get it to somebody, Malcolm Johnston's your man. All three of Johnston's goals have come from the penalty spot this year. 
This is from the second year captain. The younger brother of Montreal, Imp oh, well, not Montreal Impact anymore, CF Montreal center back, Alistair Johnston. Johnston may represent the Canadian national team at the World Cup in a couple months. Johnston aspiring to do the same in the coming years. Here's Costa Bile on the near side. Nice little touch and turn. He's looked very confident in possession today, has the young freshman. Up to meet it on the defensive end was Aaron Deans, but couldn't retain possession for the Monarchs. And now it's Will Kulvik. Rindov has had most of the, has had the brunt of the offense coming towards him. Kulvik hasn't had to be very involved up until now. That's Johnston on the chase. And the ball sent through for Eberle. A half-hearted chase. And Maryland will get a goal kick. And Josh, this is a team of nearly all freshmen. I mean, you talk about Statham, you're talking Eberle, Jenkins. I mean, how happy must Alan Dawson be to have all these young guys performing like this? Yeah, I mean, this will be the, probably the biggest test of their careers thus far, coming to Ludwig Field and playing a, a top 10 Maryland team. But anytime you have young players come into your program and right away are performing at a high level and getting you wins, and not only getting you wins, but having solid performances, it's all you can ask for as a coach. You got four or five of these guys in here that are also from Virginia, two actually from Virginia Beach, and one from Dumfries as the chase taken by Jen it, it was It was Jenkins in the middle, Eberle, missing out on the put out by Costa Bile. These guys are either international or, Virgi or from Virginia. So it's interesting to see how well they gelled so far. They look to be really confident. They understand each other on the same wavelength. I think whenever you can play a good brand of football, that's how you build chemistry. You yeah. have these training sessions, and if you're instilling confidence in a good brand of, of football on these players, then they're going to play well together no matter what. Eberle went down at the hands of Costa Bile, but there were no claims for penalties. The Old Dominion defense knew that was just pure physicality. Costa Bile has had a very nice game so far on this Maryland left. It was two early chances within the first seven minutes from the Monarchs. But since then, it's been pretty clean at the back for the Terps. As Jenkins hasn't had a flag up yet, as there were calls for offsides. This is Schmalbach as the Monarchs look to work their way back in. It's crushing defense. Really nice work combining from Nitzel and Dillon to force a free kick. Yeah, I think if you're the Terps, you're a little upset with the referee there. You want to play advantage. Max Riley's receiving that on, his, on the half turn with Joshua Bulma and Hunter George running off him on that far side. I'd almost want to see an advantage, and the Terps would look to counter there. Yeah. And we were speaking of the, of the freshmen for Old Dominion. Terps don't have too many bad freshmen either. We've been talking about Costa Bile. Not too many freshmen have gotten the chance. Well, Riley, of course, has, and he has seized his chance. But they've got Brian St. Martin, of course, the brother of legendary Terps center back Brett St. Martin. They've got a promising future ahead of them, too. But for now, they want to stick with the experience because they really can't think that this is their year. On the volley, trying to find Bulma was Will Kulvik. Nice work by Johnston to find Hunter George. Couldn't keep possession, though. All the way back to Statham. And away by Statham. It's pretty apparent which way the wind is blowing. We can't feel it up here, but Statham's goal kicks are going into about halfway in between the defensive half of Maryland and and Jamie Lowell, who who really has a peg of a right foot, is barely even getting him out of his own half. Yeah, we see the flags blowing yeah. on the corners of the field, and it's it's it will play a factor as we can see there. It will play a factor in this game. Teams picking which side they're going to play on first. That's that's going to play into who's going to have the better of the chances. And as the ball gets hung up, you're going to see more physical battles like that, which the Terps have been winning this far, whether it's been Chris Rindove, Will Kovic, or Max Riley up front. It won't come quite yet, but you saw beneath us, right towards the left-hand corner of your screen, that Steph Capetti and Herman Giamatte will be the first two subs of the game. It was Capetti, as I mentioned. It was Capetti's near instant impact that spurred the Terps on in the Ohio State game. And it was around this time, it was around the half hour mark, we're a little past that now. As Jenkins up against Rindove in the corner. Nice work by the senior to usher him out. And force him to play all the way back and now Maryland have possession. But it's just been, it's just been sweeping up. Up until now, can the Terps operate on a counter? Here's George, that's 
disappointing that he couldn't play Riley through, but he does eventually get it back. With the left foot, look to switch for Dylan, swing and a miss. And through comes Malcolm Johnston, and it falls in front for Hunter George. And if not for a big body in the middle, that's 1-0 Terps. Great last ditch defending from the Monarchs there. I believe it was Fabian Reiser who gets there and gets his body in front of him, just putting his body on the line on that chance from Hunter George. And, you know, Terps looking well going forward, and Monarchs started this game off well, but now coming under the cosh a little bit. And we, as the first subs come in, we'll take another look at it again there. There's where you see Malcolm Johnston. He gets on it, and the, and the offense just clicks. It was a very nice block in as well. As Johnston cut it onto, tried to cut it onto his right foot. And indeed, it was Fabian Reiser, the Austrian, who put the big body in. As it's Capetti and Gia Matei in. We believe it's George. Yeah, it is George and Riley who have made way. As Gia Matei looks to immediately get in on the action. As the grad streaks down the left, he beats Mar Christensen. Now looked for Bulma, but fell short with the pass. Jenkins thought there was someone behind him. There was not. And on that play, you see the difference between Gia Matei and Riley. Riley kind of playing on the defender, playing back to goal, and Gia Matei looking to run off of that back shoulder. A little bit more active for the Terps here. Oh, Costa Bile had a free left wing to run down, and Rindov didn't spot him. Here is Nitzel. As, as they play it around the back, that's good determination on that last attack, too. I mean, you could just sit back if you're Max Riley and say, yeah, let's just develop this. But no, they wanted to continue going forward. And that's also what Max Riley brings, that youthfulness, that, that young energy in his legs. And now here comes Christian. Here comes Tristan Jenkins. He plays it out wide. Can Eberle keep it in? He cannot. And I don't think he agrees with the linesman. But, and though those were the only two who had the best view in the house. And Maryland get another throw. Yeah, and here's Eberle. We're going to see a great work from our camera people here at Big yeah. Ten Plus. And that was clearly over the line. And Eberle not going to be too happy with it. I think because the ball was skipping a little bit. Maybe didn't have the clearest view of it. But I think if you're the attacker, you're always going to think it stayed in bounds. And you're mm -hmm. never going to be too happy when the referee stops you in full stride. Far side to Kolvik from Malcolm Johnston. The Norwegian looks to find Gia Matei in at the back of a defender. Now Richardson. Couldn't find Bolma. Bolma has been at least the target, but they haven't been able to find him. Good work from the from the Old Dominion defense to really lock him down thus far. Yeah, it almost looks like whoever this is playing the deeper of the two Monarchs whenever they're defending is almost man-marking Joshua yeah. Bowman, not letting him get on the ball at all and kind of just making sure the most dangerous player on the pitch doesn't get on the ball. And that's what Alan Dawson, a coach of his experience, gives you. Because he knows a good player when he sees one. He's been at the program since 1997, been coaching even longer. Swinging a boot, looking for Eberle. Nice touch and, and find by Costa Bile. Settled down by Nitzel. And nice work by Dylan to go into the back and win the foul. Ruddy, the guilty party. Beg your pardon, that was Deans who, who conceded the foul. And I think refer, referee Cesar Ibarra wants to get that started again. I'm not sure how happy the players and Sasho are with him. I think Ibarra just saying that was taken from a little bit off the spot. Costa Bile taking that closer to the end line and Rindov kind of asking the referee, you know, you can't just let us play a little five yards away as Terps get us back underway again quickly. And you see the performance so far. It's been a good performance. They haven't lacked that final deft touch. You think maybe, just like the Ohio State game, that maybe at halftime there are a few tweaks I think so. We're taking down just over 16 minutes left in this half. I think Sasha Swarovski is going to want to see a little bit more from his team, a little bit more decisiveness, a little bit more solidity in that front line, taking advantage of your chances that you're getting. As we mentioned, it was it was a combination of things that, that allowed for those subs to happen. As Will Kulvik went off injured at the half, and he needed to stay out for a little longer for a bit of treatment, but he's all good as we've seen him start, come back into the lineup here. But that also allowed for Max Riley to slot in at the top and for Josh Bolma to move into the midfield. That was the goal scorer and the assister. First two subs of the day for Old Dominion come in. 
And we also see Griffin Dillon coming off for the Terps. Josu Hetsky taking his place. Probably means that Malcolm Johnson will even more so play a little bit more of that advanced role as well. As Nicola Missaroli, one of the two. Now, now that's an Italian name, Nicola Missaroli. Here is Richardson. Won a foul in close quarters. As there is Joe Suhetsky. He also played a very important role off the bench in the 1 0 win against Ohio State. Down goes Dylan Richardson. It was Richardson who went down. And again, now this is another promising spot for a free kick. And now Hunter George is off the field. Not saying he's a liability, he's not. But you want to put Josh Bulma on this ball. He gives you a, a good chance to put it into a decent area. Yeah. And We'll see if he can get the quality service in. It looks like Joe Suhetsky also heading over there. So you have the lefty or the righty option. And that's the third time that the Monarchs have gone through the back of a Terrapins defender. You've got to have that little bit of composure. You've got to stop that because one of these dangerous set pieces is going to pull off at, at some point. It's going to be Suhetsky with the left. That's a better ball. Flicked on header, back post. Oh, how didn't Kovic find it? He was standing about two yards out. And it was a goal kick, too. So that wasn't even a save from Statham. No, it was offside. That's why. So it wouldn't have even counted anyway. But I mean, call it two yards out. What a great ball from Suhetsky as well. So we're going to look at it one more time. Oh, how does Kovic put it wide? It wouldn't have mattered in the end because he was yeah. offsides, but that's what you're looking for if you're Sasha Strowski. That, that, just that quality on the set pieces. Joe Suhetsky has a wonderful left foot. When this game is slow and Terps can kind of build up, Suhetsky is the first player you want to get on the ball. Rindov into the attacking half. It was his initial flick that found, that allowed Kovic to find it at that far post of Michael Statham's. And I think because of the miss, Kovic will be happy that that offside flag went up. Into the feet of Tristan Jenkins. They've done a good job of locking him down ever since his chance early on. Up the left went Jan Marpe. And the Terps back in possession. Gia Matei with a nice little flick on to Johnson. He's gotten it back from Richardson. It's Malcolm Johnston up the right for the Terps. Richardson drew a bit of contact. Nothing, nothing doing, says referee Ibarra. Nice bit of hold-up play from Jenkins to allow Eberle to get in front. Now Jenkins continues the run. Body from Suhetsky. And all the way out wide. Now Jenkins once more. He thought there was a 1-2 on. And still in the middle. And they go one more time, and it was Deans with the shot from way out. And that was always hopeful. Yeah, a little bit of scrappiness there in the middle of the field. Just what you expect on a rainy night like tonight. There's going to be one or two plays like that where it's just a little scrappy. The ball's kind of just bouncing around. And you just got to put the effort, extra effort in tonight to make sure those balls are come out and in favor of your team. Maryland will calmly play it around the back once more. And with about 10 minutes to go, each team has had their fair, their fair share of chances. Earlier on, it was the Old Dominion flurry that forced Lowell into two great saves. And now, just, and just now, even the Terps getting Will Kulvik in behind. But yet, a team has yet to really put their stake in on this game. And that's what we're looking for is for the just a bit of supremacy. Here is Chris Rindov, as Josh previewed just a little bit earlier. We'll have a great piece on him for those viewing from home on All Access at halftime. A little bit of his story. This is Kolvik. He was out at right back in his freshman year, transferred back into the middle for his sophomore year. Nice little give and go with Richardson. Now Johnston on it looked to give a give and go of his own. Back into Terp feet. Steph Capetti might have been offside. Stepping in Rindov to try and hold possession. Could come back to hinder him though as Jenkins has a bit of green grass ahead with Eberle to his right. That was the target. And seized upon by Kulvik and all the way back to Jamie Lowell. And 
It was the other sub for the Monarchs, Liam Thomas, getting involved in the action in the last in the buildup of the last attack. Now Costa Bile, who we've mentioned has had a very nice first half in possession and defense, all around good stuff from the young freshman. Here is Capetti, received from Richardson. Steph Capetti, oh, into the middle. They had bodies waiting as well. Giamate, one of them. Johnston, one of them. And not one could get a touch. And I think you're going to see more of that as this game moves on. I think that's what Sasha Zorowski asked of Capetti when he comes on. Just he has the space. They're giving him all the time in the world. Put a quality, quality ball in, and he does. And it looks like that came off a Monarchs defender. Should be Terrapin's ball, but not in the eyes of the referee. But good work from Capetti. They're giving it, the Monarchs give him space, and he whips in a quality cross. Terps, Terps, Terps do immediately win it back. Oh, that ball came out of Bolma's hands. So he's just going to say, I'm not trying that again. But it wasn't a foul throw. It wasn't into play. So he was able to catch it before it did. Close quarters, good work from Costa Bile to stay on it. Back to the top of the box for Bulma. He cues one up. And on the rainy and slick pitch, anything can worry a keeper, but Statham looking calm and confident as ever. And I think the rainy pitch has exactly to do with that shot choice from Joshua Bulma. I think any other night here at Ludwig Field where it's dry, Joshua Bulma's putting his laces through that and just trying to drive that into the net. But because of the, of the slick pitch, he tries to keep that on the ground and keep Statham guessing on where the hop's going to go, but comfortable enough for Statham in net. Eli Carr calmly dispossessed on the near side. Now Costa Bile, Suhetsky, and Giamate. Nice work. Bulma. Through for Johnston chasing. And now it's Stefan Capetti. He squares it back and he look and he can see the frustration on his face. Capetti has been an impact guy off the bench all year, scored his first goal at Michigan, and he's providing a spark now. He's, we saw the cross, and we've even seen this little chance. Yeah, Capetti doing a good job running off the shoulders of the Monarchs defense. He had Johnson and Gia Mate running in, looking for it, and he just gets blocked out by the defender, but Boma on this corner. Boma's delivered it short thus far. This is into a better area. It's been allowed to bounce, and it's just tomahawked away. Liam Thomas on the chase, another Englishman. And away by Deans. Now we're in Dove as we are just inside. Eight minutes left in this first half. Bulma, nice touch from the Ghanaian. He scoots into the box. It's Josh Bulma still. Away by Ricer. That's what Lightning Bolt Bulma can do. Can just give you a little bit of a jolt of energy when you need it. Yeah, and again, the slick pitch coming into play there. That touch just gets a little bit away from him. If that's a dry pitch, I think we would have had a completely different story. Nice work from Capetti. His work rate is just through the roof. Every time he comes on, that's what you want out of a guy off of the bench. As Bulma is forced to stop for a foul, believe it was, on the Canadian. And it was on Gia Mate, not Copetti. Yeah, and Gia Mate had a good impact since he's come onto the game. Again, a different forward than Max Riley. Not necessarily that back to goal, but it's going to run off the back of him. And that's exactly what you expect from a player who's the only player in Division Three soccer history to win player of the year at the Division Three level twice. And after the next attack, oh, well, now it's petered out, so I'll give it to you. He was, the, he was player of the year twice, and he was the leading scorer in the program's history as well at Amherst. In the, he is the New England Small College Athletic Conference. Say that five times fast. He is their leader in goals and points all time. Yeah, and Amherst College run by Coach Justin Serpone. Great program up there at the small little school in Massachusetts. No surprise that Giamate has come here and performed at a school like Maryland often and early. I love his story because he's a grad student. He's finally getting his chance late on in his career, a proven goal scorer. Kind of reminds me a bit of a Jamie Vardy type, where he didn't get his chance. He was in the lower leagues of England, and Leicester City take a chance on him, and he has become at 27 one of the best goal scorers. Now around 37 years old, is Jamie Vardy. He's become one of the best goal scorers in all of England, and Gia Mate is looking to do the same. And if you want a Maryland reference, kind of close to Herman Gia Mate, some fans at home might remember the name Gordon Wild, a prolific striker for the Terps. This is Suhetsky wrestled off of it unfairly. And back into Terp's possession. So with about five minutes to go, 
Terps in possession. This is maybe where you just want to take care of it a little bit and build up something. And if you can find it, just why not give it a crack? You just don't want to give that ball back to Old Dominion. Well, that's exactly what they're going to do as Capetti and Johnston not on the same wavelength as Justin Harris will get about a five-minute feature before the half. And he's actually going to come on for Josh Bolma. Interesting, interesting little substitution from Sasho. Just maybe to give him a little bit of a break. Could that be an indication as to what the game plan is for the rest of the first half? Whistle on Missaroli. Terps moving up one spot in the rankings from nine to eight. I'm not gonna lie, after that, I would after the win and the type of performance they put in against Ohio State, I thought they would have gotten a, a little bit more, but everybody above them performed pretty well too. But there was, there was a real statement win. I know I've talked about this Ohio State game a lot, but I really, I really thought personally that it was their biggest, biggest game of the year and their biggest performance of the year. Getting their first shutout, getting Max Riley in, in with a goal, showing what the subs can do off the bench as well. Really an all, all around, not just the players, but a managerial complete performance. Yeah, and Sasha Strowski is probably hoping his team could replicate that performance here. Would have liked a, a goal in the first half with under four minutes to go. It doesn't look like that will happen for the Terps here. But he'll get into his team a little bit at halftime, make one or two switches, and hope that changes in the second half. It was a similar first half as well. Sloppy at times, but, but basically just a, a chess match between the two defenses. Which one will break first? Which, which piece of cement in the brick wall will fall first? And, the, and then the first goal would dictate the game from there. This is Malcolm Johnston, swept off of it by Nicola Missaroli. And stood in by Rindove. Karen Mandare looking to make an impact. He has been anonymous this game. That's the first time we've said his name is Karen Mandare. And away they come again. Jenkins the target of the long ball down the right. And it's just too much again. You, get, you would think that with the rain, it looks to have stopped or at least slowed down that maybe the pitch would have gotten a bit more waterlogged, the ball slowing down, but no, I mean, the, the pitch has kept its speed and it's really, it's, it's keeping for less accurate passes, but it's, it's keeping for pretty good entertainment value. And the rain is coming down, but it was forecasted to be almost the leftovers of Hurricane Ian. Again, our thoughts go out to the people in Florida, it's just awful things going on down there, but a little bit calmer than we were expecting. It's just kind of that rain that's constant, but just kind of keeps the picks the pitch slick and not necessarily waterlogged to slow it down. It just makes it really, really quick. And once again, our thoughts and prayers go out to everybody affected in Hurricane Ian down on the East Coast in Florida, wherever, wherever you may be, from everybody at Big Ten Plus, our thoughts and prayers are with you. Stay strong and stay healthy and stay in it. Now this is Will Kulvik as we come back to the action. With about two minutes to go. Liam Thomas giving a burst of energy to try and worry Jamie Lowell. Open field for Gia Matei to deal with the heavy pass. Johnston, heavy first touch. Now Rindo and Costa Bile. Now Justin Harris' first action. Bit of skill wins a throw. Again, an, a relatively similar first half from the Terps to the Ohio State game, which is why I'm thinking there may be a few tactical switches at the half. It's Costa Bile to throw into Capetti. Capetti scored his first goal at Michigan a few weeks ago. His family came all the way from Toronto to see him. And boy, what a gift that must have been for his family to see him score for such a great program. His father, Jack, is an alum here. He also played on this team. Capetti has another year of eligibility after this despite being a senior. Got to be a great option to have. Nice little back heel from Suhetsky, and down went Richardson, and that's a penalty for the Terps. And out of nothing against the run of play with a minute left, the Terps have a penalty. Yeah, great work from Richardson, our featured player in the open, the reigning Big Ten Defender of the Week. He loves bombing forward, going on those overlap or underlapping runs. In this case, it's the underlap where he comes inside the 18 instead of looking to whip across and gets that little underlap going. And Gia Matei finds him beautifully with a little cut reverse pass and gets taken down. Now, this is a great matchup because Malcolm Johnston has converted all three penalties and, Mike's, and Michael Statham has only allowed one of three penalties. 
So this is going to be an interesting matchup as the, as the crew behind Malcolm Johnson get low. It's Malcolm Johnson. He scores for the Terps. And with a minute to go, Malcolm Johnson. Oh, Canada. Oh, captain, my captain. The Terps get a 1-0 lead at a waterlogged Ludwig Field. They've had to stay in it, and they've had to be strong mentally. But they have really stood in, and that's a really great reward for them. Malcolm Johnston looking cool and composed on his first three penalty kicks of the season. And this one, no different. Just a little two-step penalty. It just puts it out of the reach of Statham. If you want a clinic on how to take a penalty kick, this is it. Even though Statham guesses the right way, no keeper is getting to that. And Johnston with a beautiful finish into the left corner and a knee slide celebration of beauty to match it. The Terps go up 1-0 with just over a minute to play left here in the first half. Now that's a reward for staying in it mentally. A big reward for staying in it mentally. Because we've seen it. We've seen the Terps lap switch off, especially at these moments. We've seen them in, in this exact situation that Old Dominion's in. We could see it right here, but nice work from Kolvik. As they just have to hold on for 50 more seconds now. The Monarchs had to do it themselves for just a minute more. They switch off, and the Terps, and the Terps punish them. And as the clock winds down to about 30 seconds, this changes the complexion of the game entirely, both for Sasha Sarovsky and for Alan Dawson. Yeah, Sasha Sarovsky's halftime team talk to his team probably goes from let's stay on it, let's try to get that first goal to you guys got rewarded in the end, let's stay with that, let's put into fifth gear instead of fourth gear, and let's go get a second early on in the second half. 15 seconds to go. Maybe Giamatte had thoughts of a second in the first half. And all they have to do is hold on. A swing and a miss, and it looked like Costa Bila got caught by Rindov. But he gets up, and the referee, Cesar Barra, puts the whistle to his lips to end the first half. Well, 1-0 Terps out of almost nowhere. Well, Josh, one of the best commentators curses you could give, saying that there was, there was most likely not going to be a, ha a goal in the first half. But that, that man, Malcolm Johnston, the captain, scores from the spot with just about a minute to go. Yeah, great first half of football on a wet pitch in Ludwig. And just an overall great half for both teams. We have a very entertaining match here at Ludwig Field. As the flags are waving, the crew is chanting Sasha's name, jumping around, having a good time. And just great football all around. Saves, goals, everything you want in the first half. And we will take it to break on the other side of this first half. It is 1-0 Terps. Thinking about bringing a special group to a Maryland men's soccer game this season? Groups of 15 or more can purchase tickets beginning at $4 each and participate in exclusive group experiences. For more information, stop by the marketing table located near the main entrance. And Maryland men's soccer would like to thank and recognize the Bethesda Under 11 and Bowie Football Club in the stands tonight. Thank you for your support. And Maryland Men's Soccer would like to wish a very happy birthday.
Kellogg, your prize car. And don't forget to join us on Sunday, October 2nd at 1 p.m. as your Maryland women's soccer team plays Michigan State. Follow them on social media, W Soccer. And on Friday, October 14th at 5 p.m., we're invited to Sasho's Birthday Badge. Help us celebrate head coach Sasho Solovsky's birthday by coming out from Maryland men's soccer as they compete against the Wisconsin Badgers. Come to the party early. The first 600 fans will receive a custom party hat and custom fat head sign. The first 300 fans will receive birthday cake. The first 200 fans will receive Sasho's Crew Cup Crunch Ice Cream. And if we haven't shown you yet on the birthday of the century, for the first time ever, beer will be sold at Ludwig. We'll see you on Friday, October 14th at 5 p.m. Now, fans, please turn your attention to the field for tonight's halftime scrimmage featuring the Leeds Football Club. From freshman walk-on to senior captain, Chris Rindov has had an improbable rise in the central of the Terps defense as we go to an all-access preview on Chris Rindov for more. My name is Chris Rindov. This is my story. I see a lot of myself in Chris. I see a young man who's taking full advantage of his family's search for a better life for him. Both my parents are from Sofia, Bulgaria, and both of them are probably my two biggest influences. It was just my husband and I um, coming here not knowing what to expect, but we were hoping that everything will be for the good of our kids. Soccer is something that my husband obviously played on the street when he was Chris's age and we're glad that he went into soccer. We were fully committed to support him, go to every single day to practice. I don't think they've ever missed any one of my games. Doesn't matter whatever the reason it's, whatever the game is, we try to try fly. Obviously they love that I play soccer, but their number one priority was for me to come here and get a nice quality education. Obviously being in Montgomery County is a great public school district, so I was very fortunate to be able to kind of lead up through there. The engineering program in Maryland is very good, so being able to stay in state was definitely a big benefit. My original plan was to go on just the club team and kind of just have a good time with the guys there. My club coach kind of suggested to me to reach out to the coaches and see if I could kind of schedule like a meeting to just see if there's any potential to walk on. We get an email from his club coach and said, hey, here's a young man who's been admitted to Maryland. He's going to study engineering. You know, he, he's a very good player that just been under the radar. Uh, give him a look. At that point, it was kind of going back and forth, figuring out what the best time for him to get out on campus was, and, and it just so happened that we were in camps. So we immediately got a little video on him. We invited him to come to our camp, said, look, it's hard, it's hard to be coming to preseason at our level. Why don't you come for a day or two at the camp and we'll have a good look at you. So I ended up going to one of the camps and I spent like the whole day there. And Immediately then... you look at his, his, his physique and you go, wow, this, this kid's put together quite well. And then you talk to him and you go, my God, he's a really nice young man. And then he plays a little bit you go, why haven't we seen him? He liked what he saw the first day, so he brought me back the second day. And then after the second day, he kind of talked with me a little bit so that they had to see if they could open up a 29th roster spot. And then they got it open. And then the third day is when he offered me the spot on the team. We have a lot of emails like that. 99% of them aren't good enough. Obviously when I came in I was never really looked at as a starting option at all. In, in certain situations in games my freshman year you thought I could come on and maybe make an impact whether we needed some defensive help or offensive help. You know he played bits and pieces and I brought him in I said Chris 
you need to work on this, this, and this. Well, he worked on this, this, and this, and this, this, and this, and this, this, and this again, uh, to the point where I had to actually say, hey, Chris, look, you need to start working with other people. You can't do everything on your own. And, and he understood that. So then he was his best friends out, and now they're serving balls to him and doing different things. Me and uh, my, one of my teammates, Isaac, we really started to go a lot harder in training. And after training, we would spend pretty much hour, hour and a half every day after. We would play some inter-squad games, and uh, he was starting to really show that he's going to be special. And then uh, in the spring 2021 season of the 2020 year, I mean, he, he was a guy we couldn't take off the field. He started uh, the majority of our games that spring, and I think you could see, especially towards the end of that spring, his confidence had grown so much. Um, he was becoming a little bit more vocal within the team. Miles and I would, would look at each other as he would speak in team huddles and things like that, and kind of seeing, all right, you know, he's really stepping into his, into his own leadership-wise. Let's go out there, let's get a W and get out of here, yes, man. Go! 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 His junior year, last year, we knew he was going to be a, a big piece for the team, but didn't know how much he was going to take on a leadership role and, and kind of be part of the group. And then he really stepped into it, and there was there wasn't a way we could take him off the field, much less not have him in that leadership piece. I think Chris is so genuine when he speaks. I think he makes people want to be better because they see the way that he carries himself and the way that he approaches his everyday life. Right now, even as captain, he's the first person on the field, last person to leave. He makes sure the locker room is clean. He, there's, there's no job or detail that's beneath him, no matter if he's a senior or a captain of a team. Eli Prognali, Eric Matsalevich, Johannes Bergman, those are the guys that kind of influenced me and I kind of took after what they did. Obviously, they stayed after practice, got extra work and extra treatment. We got a little lucky with Chris. He's a great story. I mean, fantastic young man, great player. He's got a chance to lead this team to some special things this year and, and I think play beyond college.
we welcome you back just about ready for the second half here at Ludwig Field. You see the rain, but you see the crew too. No matter what, through thick and thin, those turfs will always be here, and they will always be all over the opposing keeper for the next 90 minutes. And let's take a look at some halftime highlights. There are those turfs. It was Malcolm Johnston's penalty in the first, at the end of the first half that decided it, at least the first half, but it was a pretty stark beginning from the old Dominion Monarchs. Yeah, kind of a back and forth game in the first 15 minutes. The Monarchs having the first two big chances, as you saw that one there, and then this one gets laid off to Lewis Beckett and Lowell gratefully saves, and then Terps getting their fair share of champions just with a little bit of scrappiness. Costa Bile, probably the best player on the pitch in that first half, just super active from that left back role and just creating a chance that gets stopped by Stratham. And here's Kolvik's chance off of a free kick that was called offsides, but if you're Will Kolvik, you'd like to be putting that on target, even if you are in an offsides position. And here's the play. That led to the penalty. Herman Giamate to Nick Richardson on the underlap. Just gets clipped, easily taken down. And there's Malcolm Johnston converting the penalty. Cool, calm, and collected to put the Terps up 1-0 with just over a minute left in the first half. And the Canadian's goal is the difference. As we take a look at the first half stats, Maryland very disciplined on the defensive end. Yeah, only allowing four shots, one corner kick, just an overall solid performance from the Terps in the half. Probably deserved that goal at the end of the half. They'll want to come out and find that extra gear to start this second half and try to find a second because this Old Dominion team is dangerous. Yeah, you, Josh Kaplan, gave a bold prediction that a goal probably wouldn't have happened in that first half. But that man with the captain's armband on, Malcolm Johnston, scored from 12 yards out. And they, yeah, you said they deserved it. They didn't really get too forward offensively, but as, as in for the defense. That was a real great reward from the Canadian. Yeah, and it just makes sense that that goal was created by the defense's Nick Richardson, a player who's probably been the Terps' best player over these last two to three games. I know I said Costa Bile tonight, but the other fullback, Richardson, having a great couple of weeks here, and he'll look to the second half as the rain keeps coming down here at Ludwig Field. Yeah, Nick Richardson is the reigning Big Ten Player of the Week. He scored, and he kept a clean sheet, the scoring against Penn State and the clean sheet against Ohio State. We are just about ready to kick things off. Worth noting, that's only the sixth goal that this Old Dominion defense has led up this season. Very stalwart at the back are these Monarchs, but they are ready to go, raring to go, and we welcome you back for the second half of action at Ludwig Field. Michael Kirsting, Josh Kaplan alongside me as the Monarchs quick look to get a quick attack again. As we talked in, right at the end of the first half, the penalty, it was with a minute left too, changes the complexion of everything. Yeah, now instead of it being a level playing field, you have the Terps up 1-0, perhaps with a little bit less to lose as they're going to create a chance here. Nice little touch from Johnston. The, the starters return. Here is Malcolm Johnston. Looks for the far post and his second and cleared away. There was a body coming in at the back post. I believe it was Richardson looking for his third of the season. Really nice ball, ball shot, whatever it was from Johnston. It was teasing. Yeah, and Johnston just looking for someone at the back post. Looks like it was Griffin Dillon coming at the back post. We're going to see a corner here from Joshua Bulma. Bulma's right foot parried away, headed away strongly and defiantly. Now Costa Bile chance and into the netting. Yeah, good chance from Costa Bile. They're kind of like a, a why not shot. I don't know if Sasha Swarovski will be too, too happy with that, but as a player, when that ball sits up for you nicely, there's no way you're not taking a swing at it. Looks like the starters have returned as a player down at the back for Old Dominion. He's going to have to be tended to as well. Looks like it's, it's no, Fabian Reiser standing right there. It looks like it's going to, it might be Jan Marpe, who's played outside back. They've kept, the Terps have kept him pretty quiet through the first half. And just a minute in here, we're saying his name, but not for the right reasons. Yeah, I hope it's okay. It looks like he's grabbing that, that calf area. You kind of hope that it's just a, a cramp or something like that, or just a little knock for the defender there. Yeah, it's got to be hard to keep them. It's got to be hard to keep warm out there. I mean, Sasha Sarovsky nice and bundled up on the sidelines, but these players, especially standing still, can't be feeling too great. As we see Alan Dawson, it was his game plan that was going pretty nicely as we talk about a potential man marking of Josh Bolma in the first as it's actually Samuel Mar Christensen, not Jan Marpa, who was injured. But he's getting off walking under his own power. Good to see. So because the trainer comes on, he'll have to come off for just a little bit to see if he can continue on. 
It'll be Michael Statham behind or in front of the crew to kick off. Yeah, they're getting wiggy witted out there. Nice little wig night in support of Pride Night as well. They're giving out the rainbow wigs. Great work by all teams involved to put this night together and great work by the crew showing out in these pretty harsh conditions. Christensen immediately back on. It was his header that put it into the feet of Hunter George. Kovic all the way back to Lowell. And they've kept, the Terps have kept leading scorer, the leading scorer pretty quiet. It's been Tristan Jenkins' year so far. Five goals to his name thus far, but he has had his chances. But after those early those early moments of scarcity from the Terps, they've kept them pretty quiet overall. Yeah, and that's, that's a tribute to the Terps defense who who have played so solidly outside the first five, ten minutes of this game that they've kept the Old Dominion attack very quiet and kind of taken this game into their own. What they've struggled to find, this Terps defense, I believe, is an identity that they've kept on letting up goals. It's not necessarily a bad thing. You're gonna, you're bound to let one up once or twice, but that Ohio State one was their first shutout. You're so used to seeing the strong defense of Sasha Sarovsky led teams as Hunter George lets one fly. It wasn't Hunter George, beg your pardon. It was Griffin Dillon who let it fly. Two why not shots so far from the Terps. And you just wonder if that's a message from Sasha Sarovsky, having seen two of these shots from distance already. You wonder if he told his team, you know, let's test this keeper a little more. I want to see us shoot a little bit more from distance in these conditions. Might take a weird skip, might take a weird hop that gives it a weird curve and try to test strap him a little bit more. Oh, heavy challenge put on Karan Mandare. I believe it was Nitzel who conceded the foul. Mandare all the way from Hastings, New Zealand, the other side of the world, played with the, with the Napier City Rovers in the Central League of New Zealand's top flight. Uh, well, that's the second tier of New, of New Zealand's football pyramid. They've got him from everywhere. Ball looks for Jenkins, away by Kulvik. Nitzel gathers and finds Dillon. Richardson knocks ahead, looks for Riley, who was returned in his first start, got about 25 minutes in the first half before giving way to Gia Matei. Herman Gia Matei, the grad student, awaits return on the bench. Probably went out, no it didn't, it looked like it went off of Richardson last. But he's won the throw, looking long for Riley. They'll get another right close to the flag. And it'll be George to put it back into play. And he'll just give it off to Richardson. Maybe they'll queue up for a long throw. Nope, they'll play it quickly in. Looking to see if there are any tactical changes. And it looks like Josh Bolma has slid into the center. That could just be for the moment, though. We'll see once, once it settles. It looks like Dylan was out on that far side. It's gone all the way through to Hunter George. Nice chest down. Hunter George across. Low with this right! And Max Riley! would have doubled the lead if he was not standing in an offside position. That would have been the freshman's second goal in as many games, and he feels as if he's been wrong done. Yeah, great work from Hunter George. You just wonder if that offside call was on Riley or George as the Monarchs get the ball back into play quickly, but just beautiful work from the Maryland offense right there, and Sasha Swarovski will be looking for more of that as this half carries on. Richardson, nice hard into the body of Owen Ruddy. Great movement from, I mean, Riley's positioning has been excellent over these past two games. This game, too, right place, right time for the goal against Ohio State, and he was there, too. Also a really nice touch from Hunter George to take it down on the slick pitch off his chest and settle it right where his feet could allow him to take a nice touch and pass. Now Bolma. Griffin Dillon, first touch into the area. Swept away, and Bolma gathers for the corner as we're gonna take a look at the last chance. It was definitely not Hunter George. It was Max Riley. And from that angle, it's close. It is very close. Just looks like maybe he was off the back shoulder of that last defender as we see the corner whipped in here to the back post. It was deep and it found Kulvik again. And that's his second miscued header of the day. Nice to see the big boys getting up on the set pieces. Set pieces has been an area where it's really lacked this year for Maryland, but that's a better service. You, there was actual intent on that. You wanted to find somebody at the back post. And Suhetsky's cross was where the other Will Kulvik header came off 
It was not as fortunate as Riley's flag for offsides again. Well, it was Rindo's initial header that was flicked onto Kulvik, who was alone at the far post and just couldn't finish. And an offside flag relieved him of a few more embarrassments. Nice ball down the left for Jan Marpa. He's been allowed to run, finds Ruddy. Ruddy all the way back to Mandair. Now Beckett. This is Christensen. Christensen from the capital of Iceland, Reykjavik. Nice ball down the line for Mandair from Ruddy. Square into the middle, and it Jenkins was lurking around the 12-yard spot at the penalty marker. But it had just risen high enough so the Terps wouldn't have to worry. They'll graciously and happily concede a corner. Yeah, good work from Costa Bila there. Probably didn't receive any communication. Knew Ruddy was coming in off the back and just puts it behind for a corner, not willing to risk the fact that a, a Monarchs attacker was right behind him. Corner taken off the far side. It's going to be Jenkins to come short. With both arms up, it's delivered long and rising highest. And it's not fully away yet. Still in the middle. It was Reiser who rose the highest. They'll get another crack at it. And Deans tried to squib another shot in. It's going to be Beckett once more. It's to be a dark and eerie corner on the far side. The light's barely reaching it. It's Beckett's right foot. He's hung it up there a little bit more. Deans was the closest. Back in by Ruddy into a really nice area. Still Deans with the header. George had to be careful to not concede a high boot. He did well to clear it. It's Mandare. He's forced to go all the way back. And the Terps repel. That's their first stand up defensively that they've had to make this half. And they've done it well. Settled down to Griffin Dillon. Now Hunter George on the near side. Nice bit of skill from the California native. He looks through for Bulma. And all of these passes from Hunter George, not the first time. He has won a foul, though. Not going to let him off the hook, though, as he is, he's, his passes have seen a bit of, uh, my goodness, getting tangled over my words. They have seemed a bit adventurous today, as they have in past games. Yeah, I think that's kind of one of those, though, where I will let him off the hook with that one. I yeah. think that's one where he knows it's coming back if he doesn't place the pass. Kind of like a free play in football with the offsides call. Just kind of knows he can, he can risk a, a forward-looking pass and tries to find Joshua Bowen with the outside of his left boot, but get, wins the ball anyways with the free kick. Bulma has switched into the middle. It was this tactical switch that won them the Ohio State game. I've said it a million times, but I just want to put the emphasis on it that Bulma is really showing his creative side when he slides off the wing and he, and he sits in the midfield. That ball, that ball hung up in the stratosphere with the wind. As here is Bulma. There's that creative side. This is Dylan Richardson with the run. It's Nick Richardson. Has bodies to aim for. Cuts it on to his left. Richardson. Back post, Bulma, audacious. Bulma on his bike. He's yet to find the way to get the training wheels off. Yeah, tried to find the spectacular there with Richardson again, performing with those bombing runs down the right side. The ball comes out to him, cuts it back onto his left foot, just dinks it into the area, and Joshua Bulma tries the spectacular, just misses on the timing a little bit. He's disappointed with himself because he knows that's something he can pull off, but not every player can pull that one off. Challenge was for the ball, but it was not caught as a chunk of Mandare was, was taken out. And the first booking of the day will go to Hunter George. Yeah, just really no need for that from Hunter George. Comes sliding in from behind, as we're going to see here. I like the intent. I like the press from the Terps, but just no need for this one coming through the back of a player. Really risky challenge. He actually did get the ball. Oh, well, he didn't get the ball, but the intent was there. He saw a bit of the ball, and it's given away immediately to Max Riley. He has Johnston on his right. He's going to take it himself, Max Riley, and fires just over the bar. Yeah, one of those where he wins it back early and looks for that blast at the near post, trying to beat the goalkeeper high into his left. But in these wet conditions, I'd like to see Max Riley take the far post and on the ground here as we're going to see costly turnover and... Riley picks the ball up, finds his little bit of space, and just just narrowly misses high. Monarchs back in possession on the far side. This is Reiser. All the way back to Statham. Nice complex to find Marpa. Marpa is from 
Bochum's academy. Bochum are currently in the Bundesliga. They sit dead last through only seven games, six, seven games throughout the European slate. Christensen short to Statham, as it's now going to have to be Statham who played with the wind at his back in the first half to deal with the ball and the wind in his face in this second half. Costa Bile to get the ball back rolling. This is Bolma off a nice quick few touches. Look at Richardson's bursting run down this right. He's gotten out there, and Johnston's found him with the pass. This is George. Puts it on his left. Two to aim for. Bolma won. Away by Reiser, but Bolma up against Christensen now. His determination gets the ball back for the Terps, forcing a sloppy pass. Nitzel finds Bulma, first time ball from Bulma. Flicked on header, Max Riley. Boy, what a ball that was on the first time in the slick conditions for Bulma. And Riley again, staying up in the attack. Yeah, one of those things that Riley gives you that these other center forwards that Maryland has do not. The big physical aerial presence this time is a big looping ball from Joshua Bulma. And Riley just mistiming his jump, catches it on the way down, and just forces it to go wider than he would have liked. This is exactly what Sasha Sarovsky wants to be seeing, though. But now they've got a little bit of defending to do as it's Dylan coming back. What a, what a nice ch No, it's a foul. It looks like Griffin Dylan got the ball. He must have caught the player first. What a great chance. It was Aaron Deans who got fouled. And I believe that there was a yellow just given out as well. We're going to take a look at it again. As it was Dean storming forward from center back. Oh, he, Griffin Dillon looked to have gotten the ball first. Yeah, I don't think the foul was for the challenge there, not necessarily. Just probably grabbing the jersey and consistent trying hand battling. It looked like it was going both ways, but Dillon definitely the perpetrator of it. I'm not sure. A yellow card maybe, but not necessarily. So it's going to be Beckett from deep. He lofts it up. And it was a flicked on header. Reiser was in the mixer. And a big guy like that, you don't expect a flicked on header from him. You expect him to put it on target. As he stayed down after his shot, might have hit the ground a little heavy. All six, three of them hit the ground pretty heavy. Big commanding center back there. And if you're the Terps, this is one thing you have to watch out for. Old Dominion, one of the bigger teams that the Terps will play all year. A lot of players on that 6-1 to 6-3 range and Reiser puts it over the goal, fortunately for the Terps, but those set pieces will start becoming more dangerous as this game goes on and the Monarchs will send more of those big bodies forward. Mandare sends, sends the ball through and it's gonna be Tristan Jenkins. Oh, what a save, Lowell. Denying Tristan Jenkins of his sixth of the season. Corner to the Terps. Second time. The Terps have been bailed out by their goalkeeper, Jamie Lowell. Jenkins gets clean in on goal. You'd expect him to finish this nine times out of ten, but this was that one time where Jamie Lowell comes up big for the Maryland Terrapins. Oh, if I'm Alan Dawson, I'm expecting my leading goal scorer to finish it ten times out of ten. Great save, really great save from Jamie Lowell. Beckett's ball in, deflected away. That's the wrong direction from Costa Bile. But Dylan gets up, not quite away yet. And now he tomahawks it away. Maybe not intending for Bulma, but he got a chase out of it. They quickly want the ball, does Josh Bulma. Old Dominion nearly snatching one against the run of play. And if not for Jamie Lowell, who has been really putting in a, quite a few shots. Nitzel. Nice little bit of interplay. Now they look towards goal. Bulma's through, but the flag was up. 
But again, nice bit of ingenuity from Bulma and nice little bit of interplay from the Terps on the attacking side of it. And that's the third time the Terps have been caught off sides this half. And it's something that I think Sasha Shrovsky will be upset about, but not angry about. Because I think he's probably told his team to try and play off that back shoulder a little bit. Try to get in behind a little bit. And I think he's going to like those ideas from his team. Just needs to get the timing down a little bit and one of those will come off. Ball never went out. Nitzel thought it did. Slid through for Jenkins to chase. And out by Lowell, who's whose goal kicks are finally coming off. This is Bulma on the chase. Lowell will like to play with the wind at his back. Hunter George back into play. He's gotten it back from Nick Richardson, who provides an overlap. He stayed strong, has the California native. He looks to find Griffin Dillon, but just a bit too square to goal. Good idea, though, from George there. Maryland looking to play these big switches, looking to get these balls in behind the defense. Kind of a different style than we saw from the Terps in the first half. This is Bulma. Light through for George. Now Riley at the back. It's Costa B. Nope, it's Griffin Dillon who sends it long. Always searching ball. And the next... Next round of subs come in for each side. Capetti and Suhetsky back on for the Terps. And Owen Ruddy makes way. I believe it is Alexis La Montagna who is in, wearing the number 12. And for the Terps, look like Hunter George and Griffin Dillon, the two players who have been shown yellow cards in this match coming off for Sasha Sorowski, probably just giving them a little bit of a break, doesn't want either of them to pick up that second yellow so early in the second half. La Montagna immediately involved in the action. Now Jenkins to Mondaire. Mondaire surrounded by a sea of yellow. Nice little chip along from Capetti. Capetti really gives a nice spark off the bench. He's in it immediately as there's Max Riley. I don't really know what he was thinking and I'm not sure he knew what he was thinking with the little flick. Takes that on. He has a little bit of space behind him. Yeah, I think he was maybe looking for for Joe Suhetsky made a run into the box but here's that that work from Capetti and then a quick throw from Richardson is you're going to see Joe Suhetsky trying to make that run into the box. Probably who Max Riley was looking for just couldn't put it off. This is Reiser. Again, back into Terrapin feet. This is Johnston. Nitzel looks for Costa B layout wide. That's a pinpoint pass from the German. He's back on it now. Sees Johnston. Terps looking to patiently build. This is Capetti. He find, looks for Malcolm Johnson and does find him by way of a deflection. It's Joe Suhetsky who opened up and blasted it over the bar. Definitely looking for that top corner, but the New York native getting his first shot and trying to make an impact. Yeah, great look for Suhetsky here. This is one where he's going to be f infuriated with himself. Terps get a little lucky as the ball finds Johnston here, and Suhetsky doing exactly what you're taught, opening his body up onto that favored left foot, looking for the top left corner, and just misses as we now see Colin Griffith on the field for Max Riley. It was those two who combined in the 30th minute for a near for a near chance. It was Steph Capetti and Griffith. It was Capetti's shot who hit the post. Now this is Richardson to get things back and rolling. Monarchs mark well, but here's Capetti with a bit of space. Now Bulma has Costa Bile with a bit of room. The left footed ball in. It looked for Griffith, spilled at first. But nice recovery from Statham. Nobody was around, so he had no reason to be worried. Terps lead 1-0 through a 44th minute Malcolm Johnston penalty. It's the fourth meeting in, in these two clubs' history. And since the first one in 2003, which saw, which saw Maryland knock these Monarchs out of the of the NCAA tournament. Alan Dawson and Sasha Sorovsky have been at the head for all of them. Shows the experience and shows the longevity in each of these two coaches. Two top, top tier coaches. Quickly played in off a free kick. 
Griffith was the target. Hold, held up was, doing the holding up was Costa Bile on the far side at the expense of a free kick. And that's one of those if you're Costa Bile, just a little bit of the freshman inexperience coming in for him. For that ball skipping off the pitch, there's no reason to try and go in front of your man and win that ball. Just keep him in front of you. Look to win the ball off his second and third touch. This is Marpe on the near side. Pressure from Capetti. His high work rate forces a pass. And on to the other side go the Monarchs. It's Bulma up in defense. Ball falls, quick strike, it's fallen for Mandare, and the shot to the far post. It came from Schmalbach. Not too worrisome for Lowell, but worrisome for the back line. Second time that they've been tested. Yeah, it kind of looked like he scuffed his shot here almost as the ball found him and just couldn't get it out from under his feet. A comfortable enough save for Lowell. Booted long by Kulvik, and they're gonna have to do it again. As the rain, we see the rain still very much falling. Kulvik's going to have to take that again. Long and away, and Old Dominion back into possession again. Even though it's been a quite attacking minded first or second half, the Terps do still have a 1-0 lead to hold on to, but they have they have shown that they're not satisfied with just the one and they really want to earn another. Really nice defensive work from Costa Bile. We highlighted him at the beginning when we came back for the second half that he's had a great defensive showing. Down goes Suhetsky. They're gonna try and get it started again. Griffith wanted to. And they now will get it started through Malcolm Johnston. Richardson was screaming for the ball on the near side, had his arms up. He was all alone as well. This is Bulma. Nitzel finds Kolvik. This is how deep Capetti is dropping, and he's going to try and run forward again. Now Johnston finds Richardson. The two captains combine. Looked for Suhetsky, did Nick Richardson. Quickly back into the feet of Bulma, left wand try. Deflection comes all the way out for Costa Bile and his cross gets blocked. This has been a little bit more of a dominant and imperial display on the attacking end though for Maryland. Keeping it in the, in the defensive half of Old Dominion, not allowing them to come through at least at least many times. Yeah, a little bit of consistent pressure these last four or five minutes. Just got to look for that breakthrough now. Capetti can give that a, that that goalie Statham a little bit of a scare, and he can give the spark as well. It'd be great to see his work rate rewarded. Is now a bit of an open midfield for the Canadian to work with. The Maris transfer could not find the Ghanaian Josh Bulma. In the middle left, ball falls to Suhetsky, who hits on the half volley. And Statham comfortably lets it wide. And given away by Statham. It's the first mistake we've seen today. This is Suhetsky, chipped up looking for Griffith. Bulma was there as well in case it fell. And this is Deans, dispossessed very nicely. Now Bulma on his right, teed up, top of the box. Good challenge in by Reiser. Foot race to the ball that Kulvik will win up against Schmalbach. Now there's a physical battle to win, and Kulvik's won a free kick. Excellent work there from the Norwegian. Just getting his body there, making sure the touch gets there before the defender and takes it around him and wins his team possession. And they're quickly back into it with Richardson. Nice little skill from the Baltimore native. Near post, away. Only as far as Mandare at the edge of the box. Swept clear, Jenkins on the chase. Rindo with the header. 
softballs hit Mandare in the face. He's had to get up immediately, though, because he knows that Jenkins is ahead of him. He needed to help. But Karan Mandare immediately up. And throwing for the Monarchs on the far side. I think that man, Sasha Sarovsky, is going to be happy with what he sees, especially from Josh Bowman, his creative side in the midfield? I think so, especially conditions like these. You just want to see a quality performance from your team. Just be able to string these passes together because a lot of teams in these conditions wouldn't be able to adapt and adjust to the wet conditions and the slick surface. But his team have been able to and been able to keep possession like this. Unfortunately, the commentator's curse coming in there as Joe Zuhetsky loses the ball in the middle of the field. It was nice interplay between Bolma and Costa Bile. A nice bit of skill as well with the back heel, but Zuhetsky's... Stray touch lets him down. It's been that kind of pressure right there from Richardson and Capetti, uh, especially on this near side. They get that ball out wide, they've immediately got another player. And it usually is Capetti, especially when he's on the field, that forces into a dispossession or a bad pass and the Terps gain possession back. And you even saw the frustration there from Tristan Jenkins, just his body language, just saying, why are we kicking it long? Just play it to my feet, give me a chance. And the pressure from the Terps just not letting Jenkins give that chance. We haven't heard Jenkins' name a lot. You can credit that to the defense, but also credit it to the offensive players for Maryland's team, keeping that pressure high. That's exactly what you want to see if you're if you're the guys pressuring and if you're Sasha, because that's part of the game plan is to be pressuring them into not giving the ball to Jenkins. He's got it here, but again, as soon as he's been getting on it, aside from the clear chance through that Lowell had to bail his defense out of, it's been pretty solid in limiting him in this second half. Here's Johnston, Capetti. Capetti's a guy who's really always up for it. He's dropping in, he's dropping deep to defend, he's dropping into the midfield to help with possession, and then getting right back into the box as well. Here's Marpa. Switch outside to Deans. And Reiser. Good pressure from Griffith to make sure that they play these passes short and crisp in a, on a rainy slick pitch like this. One touch astray, and the Terps can finish things off. This is Karan Mandare. Christensen out to the right with Deans ahead. The Virginia Beach native in possession. Up against Costa Bile and Bolma, and the latter has conceded a free kick. We've seen Nick Richardson and we've seen Luca Costa Belight both showing their attacking ambition. It's been Jan Marpa and Aaron Deans as well in the second half. They've been doing it for the Monarchs. It's going to be Beckett. Nearly level with the corner flag, almost right on the touch line. It's Beckett's ball all the way deep and nobody's gotten a touch on it. And it's not going to slow down enough and Maryland have a throw. About 17 minutes left. That was a pretty decent chance had the ball been put in the proper areas. And you see from this angle, the rain just really coming down. Doesn't matter though, listen to that crew to our right hand side. They just want to make their voices heard and show that they are the best fans in the country. It's their 20 year anniversary this year. They have become the premier college soccer fan base. Here is Schmalbach down the left center. Got it wide, puts it onto his right. And he couldn't find Mandare at the top of the box. Now Rindo couldn't play it delicately over the top for Capetti. He's really got an eye for goal. Every time he can't turn his back with the ball in possession, he's jumping up frustrated. He's just, give me one more. Costa Bile, Bolma was the target. Costa Bile immediately up past the midfield stripe to take the throw in. He'll do it again. Suhetsky wants to be the recipient of the throw. Main run at the back line. Of course, no offsides on the throws.
Costa Bile and Nitzel, nice little interplay. The challenge from Deans was necessary. And they'll go at it one more time. Deans played for Bethesda Soccer Club, so he's familiar with the area. From Virginia Beach, but with his travel team, he is a freshman all through his ranks, through his younger, for, through his younger years. Has seen a decent, seen the decent half of the M, and he lives in the V of the DMV. This is Griffith. Now Bolma has only one to aim for. It's Capetti, and he got his header. He got the contact right, just not the placement. Yeah, good look there from Bolma trying to find Capetti at that far post as he comes across his defender, looks to head it back across goal, exactly what you want. Just not mistiming his jump, just misdirecting it, as you said, Michael, just far of that post. The intent with Capetti, whether or not it comes off correctly, the intent is always there with Steph Capetti, and that's what you got to appreciate from him. He wanted the through ball there for Johnston. He couldn't find it. Karan Mann there on the interception, but there's Capetti again. He's showing his... He's really showing that work ethic. I've said it a few times, but this is exactly what you want from a guy. He's a transfer from Marist. Probably his father, Jack, coming here in his in the 80s was probably a was a real motivation for him to come. Gotta be making Father Jack proud, scoring in front of him at Michigan. He's putting in a real good shift tonight as well, coming off the bench. Marpa, pass intercepted. Pressure from Griffith on Reiser. And lifted long by Beckett. Schmalbach at the back of Richardson. Possession conceded now. This is Griffith. Sees Bulma, can send him on a run. And again, we're going to say this for another time, that if this was a dry pitch, that's a really nicely weighted ball from the freshman. Yeah, even Joshua Bolma can't keep up with that one. That's how you know the pitch is fast. Mm -hmm. Owen Ruddy looks to find Schmalbach once more. He does. The Venetian finds La Montagna in the midfield. Now Aaron Deans. About 13 and a half minutes left. Old Dominion look to stake their possession claim and try and pounce on a sleeping Terps defense. So these are these moments that Sasha has talked about. He doesn't want careless in these situations. This is where they need to stay as laser focused as possible. Because any lapse in concentration, you've got a guy with five goals through as many games as they've played, he's gonna punish you. This is Deans on the far side for Beckett. Christensen to the opposite side for Marpa. Mandare with the good ball through for Jenkins to chase. Nice defensive work, but it's come off a second time for Jenkins. Has it gone out? No indication, but now there is. And it's a goal kick. So that's how you stay laser focused. As Gia Matei will be on for the final 12 and a half minutes for Griffith. And Michael Eberle back on for the final 10 minutes himself. This is Capetti, whose bit of skill sent him, the, uh, sent him the wrong way. Eberle had latched on. Now it's back in the feet of Bolma. Sees Capetti. Suhetsky advances forward. Now Nitzel and Richardson. And the Terps will take this all day long. Just nice casual possession away from Tristan Jenkins. It was long to Gia Matei and uh, almost latched onto it did the Amherst transfer. 
Suhetsky in possession and quickly loses out. Lamontan finds Karan Mandare. Has Marpa in support and has Johnson in pressure and finds Deans with a bit of real estate ahead of him. Lamontan has a lot of real estate ahead of him. Quickly closed down by Bolma. Deans lifts long. Eberle the target. Now Deans on the ground, away by Rindov. Not completely, though. Still there with the Monarchs, but not as threatening. As it was Beckett who was trying to get into the dangerous areas. Now here is Gia Matei, all on his own. Still Gia Matei. Statham nice and calm, despite the Giamate pressure. Nice little back heel to find Marpa, but great work from Capetti, tracking back again from his offensive post. Kolovic stayed nice and calm with Jenkins at his back. Nitzel finds Giamate, he hit the deck with the flicked header, and Giamate wonders where the foul was. This is Mandare, so we're 10 minutes to go. It is still the Malcolm Johnston penalty with one minute to go in the first half that separates the Monarchs and the Terps. A little bit of a trip, no whistle again from Cesar Ibarra. Put into touch for Bulma. He quickly gets it back into play for Suhetsky. Now Capetti. This is where Richardson likes to operate. He's gonna be found, it's Nick Richardson into the back. Now Nick Richardson has a shot. And that's where the wet pitch comes in again as he slices across it. Yeah, just unlucky there from Richardson. Maybe a bit wild from him too, the wet pitch playing into it a little bit as Gia Mate finds him with a beautiful ball. And Richardson does well to open up some space and just slices it wide. Unlucky from him and he's upset with himself as he should be. He's a quality player, should be doing a little bit better from there. This is Eberle. He's been dealt with really well so far. He's been relatively anonymous. Now Kolvik all the way back to Lowell. Back into possession with the Monarchs. And it's Nitzel who's called on the foul. Lamontan, the recipient. And Nitzel's wondering, well, he's stuck in a high boot at me. And look at Nitzel getting into the face of Cesar Ibarra. We're gonna take a look here. Let's take another look. As it was definitely a 50-50 ball, well, yeah, Nitzel definitely did, he won the ball, but he definitely did catch a piece of Alexis Lamontan. It's been Beckett all night over the set pieces. And it continues to be him on this one. The Englishman puts a ball into a nice area. I mean, Chris Rindo, I mean, talk about a vertical on this guy. It's not completely clear yet. It's hit, clattered off the bar. Second chance goes wide. Was it cleared off the line and hit onto the bar was the question. Regardless, it's heroic defending from Will Kolvik at the expense of a corner. Just last ditch defending from the Terps. They're doing everything they can to protect this lead in the last seven minutes and plus change of this game. It's Beckett again into another good area. And this time nobody's gotten a touch. And Maryland can breathe a sigh of relief. Let's take another look. As it was lifted in by Mandare and it was Kolvik who did get a touch onto the bar. So last ditch defending as Josh Kaplan mentions. And Kolvik, not Kolvik, Lowell was completely handcuffed. And he knew he was beaten. But that's why you always have a man at one of your posts on the set pieces. Just great last ditch defending from Will Kolvik. Everything you want from your center back in one play right there. That's the second or third time. Now this time Lowell was the one who needed the bailing out. In the early stages, it was Lowell who did it. And now Will Kolvik, his trusty center back, 
keeps the game at 1-0. That could, that could be the chance, and that could have been the chance that Old Dominion were looking for. Now Mandare looks forward again. He's been lively on the ball these last few minutes. Capetti stands in, and Richardson was fouled by Eberle in the clash to get the ball, and Eberle's gonna get booked. Looked like maybe a stray Wait. elbow that caught Richardson in the face, and Eberle gonna be cautioned for that. Just as we see Richardson get up here, good to see him up, just maybe catching a, a stray elbow from Eberle, as I, as I mentioned. Good to see that he's all right, and we can continue on here, but the referee booking Eberle, stopping the clock with just under six minutes to go here as we're going to see what happened right here as we see both players challenging for the ball and Everlay just catching Richardson not even with an elbow just his hands almost going up with his arms extended a little bit of a an awkward one there but good to see both players okay and ready to get back underway we mentioned Richardson's impact over the last two games for the Terps he's rightfully earned that Big Ten player of the week title this is Bulma at the feet. Got it from Gia Mate. Still Bulma. Still Bulma on his feet. It's like Velcro. They finally unstitch. And pressure came from Johnston. Constant pressure from the Canadian. It's Johnston and Rindo, two of the three captains. Number nine, Jonas Smallback. It looks like Schmalbach, who was subbed off, has made way back into this game for a little bit more of an attacking prowess to try and steal a point back for the Monarchs. Kulvik steps up. Everybody on sides, and Kopetti knew it. Quickly rolled back out to Reiser. Fabian Reiser plays Karan Mander. Statham, who besides the penalty has had an otherwise very solid game in the outfield play that, of the shots that he has faced. Yeah, I mean, you can't really fault a goalkeeper for a penalty unless it comes off his gloves and he had no chance on Malcolm Johnson's penalty. That seems like it was ages ago now with all the action in this game, but again, Statham no chance on that one. And unfortunate to see his clean sheet go away in that manner for him, but Terps will take it any way they can get it. Suhetsky with good pressure, Bolma. He will get it back from the New York native. Now, Bulma down the right. He actually tried for the near post. I don't think he meant to do it, but to see if he could catch Statham napping is always worth a shot. Every time Mandare looks to turn up these last two, three minutes, turn up the field, that is, he's been forced backwards by this constant pressure. Terps stand about three and a half minutes away from a second 1-0 win in as many games. It's Mandare. Hung all the way up in the wind, but it did find its way to the feet of Jenkins. The Welshman forced off it by Will Kolvik, who's had an excellent game, as has this entire Maryland defense. On the chase goes Steph Capetti. Steph Capetti is through on goal. Stefan Capetti! Oh, what a save from Statham. And that would have put the icing on the cake. And there's nothing you can blame Steph Capetti for there. What a save from Michael Statham. And look at Capetti's reaction. And actually, great play from Joshua Bulma here, too. Just being able to wait and have that patience to wait for Capetti to make that run off the shoulder. Good look for Capetti and an even greater foot stave from Statham. What a chance to seal this game for Capetti. And you just can't get it done. And you just wonder, does that leave the door open? Just a crack in these final two minutes and 40 seconds plus change. Bulma is going to hit it long, and he's hit it short. Swing and a miss from Deans. Maryland have defenders back to ward off the counter. Suhetsky goes wide to Bulma with a bit of real estate, but the flag is up on the near side. And now...
relatively chanceless second half. Nothing huge up until that Capetti tried. Jenkins did have one of his own. So it's been a real goalkeeper display, but this is hit to the back post. Again, it was Beckett. He's putting all the balls into the right areas. Just not too many of them are being latched onto. Yeah, that one perhaps just a little heavy to be latched on at the back post and expect Jamie Lowell to take all the time in the world here with the clock still running to take this goal kick. Terp's defense has been stout tonight. Especially with the wind at his back, Rindo will put a, will put a real foot through this one. As the clock ticks down, Terps are about a minute away. Flicked on header from Gia Matei. And boot it back into the mixer One minute, by Marpa. And this is Marpa again up the, up the near side. Johnston cuts in front. And now here's Capetti to Suhetsky. He had Gia Matei. Nice challenge in by Owen Ruddy. That's not fully clear. Now it's Suhetsky. Opens his body up. Finds Bolma. Josh Bolma. Dancing around, it's still Josh Bolma. Bit of skill, left footed try. And too low to worry Statham. And now with 30 seconds left, what can the Monarchs do? This will be the last stand for the Monarchs. It's come all the way through to Eberle. Schmalbach was initially on it. It's not fully away and it's Eberle. Lifted in towards Ruddy, away and stabbed at and all the way away by Richardson. It's not quite there yet, but the Terps can sense it. Nine, Lifted eight, long, seven, away by Kolvik. Six, five, four, and that should three, just about two, do it. And that one, stabbed away, zero, fully away for a Maryland Terrapins. One nil win and Q victory. Great performance here from the Terps. Conditions given, just an all out effort from the Terps. You see players collapsing, working so hard for this one nothing win. And it's just an all around solid performance. I wouldn't necessarily give it that A plus, that A level performance, but with a rainy pitch, Sasha Swarovski would just to like see his effort from his team. And that's what he got here tonight. And it was a Malcolm Johnston penalty in the 44th minute. That is the difference between these two sides. For our crew and our cameras, we thank you for joining us here on Big Ten Plus tonight. For Josh Kaplan, my name is Michael Kirsting. Once again, thank you very much for joining us on a soggy Friday night from Ludwig Field. 1-0 Terps, your final. Have a good weekend, everybody. Thanks again for coming. Please be careful exiting the facility and please drive home safely. Good night, everybody, and go Terps!